All right, hello everybody. Welcome to another uh, BlockchainGaming.com meetup. Uh, as usual, we are coming uh, or recording at our local hack space in Vancouver, Decontrol, uh, where we've been doing these meetups for a little over a year now. So if you're ever in town, uh, make sure to reach out to us or Twitter or whatever, or and uh, come by. And if you're looking to showcase your project and anywhere in the Vancouver area, we're uh, always happy to uh, have you. So today we've got uh, Aiden from Ethermon.io. Um, and he's also going to be representing Chain Guardians. Chain Guardians. There's a lot of chain games out there. I didn't want to get that one wrong. Uh, so uh, yeah. So I, why don't you start? And give us a little bit of the uh, history. I'm going to have to borrow no, Willy Winnie the Pooh here, free Hong Kong. Um, so I didn't hail from Hong Kong. So I just throw that uh, we had a meetup for that recently. Uh, lots of meetups happen here. Uh, so wait, what? Tell us what's an Ethermon? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, so Ethermon stands for Ether Monster. Uh, so essentially, it's a, a blockchain version of, of uh, be able to catch, train, and evolve monster for battle, and they are all essentially NFT ERC seven two one tokens. Uh, so yeah, so uh, Ethermon was founded in actually two thousand seventeen initially. Okay, so it's one of the first blockchain games yeah, to really actually try and uh, do something right new before uh, crypto games. Uh, actually, I Is think it true? was developed the same time that uh, Crypto Kitty started developing. Uh, because the all the monsters original contract was developed before the ERC seven two one standard, which was later on kind of formalized by the CryptoKitties team. Uh, so the initial development, and because initially I started as uh, so now I own a project, but previously I was actually one of the key community members. I followed all the way through. Uh, when I started, I actually had a pick between should I in, uh, in, in spend my Ether uh, on either CryptoKitty or Ethermon? And to me, uh, Ethermon at that time had all the battle system. Uh, CryptoKitty had all the, what you call it, the breeding system. But to me, yeah. uh, and I, I kind of picked one and that was kind of, you know, where I picked. Yeah. Nice. I felt similarly as a player for CryptoKitties. I wanted to play with them, not just have them. Right. Yeah, I think it made yeah. a really good uh, proof of concept. It yeah. does get really touted as the first game. But I think it was like probably like a really like a proof of concept that like look there is something here we can do things with them, um, and they did add more gameplay elements later. But it like always, the collectible games really felt like more like collectibles, and like the breedings definitely got game elements, right? Uh, a little bit of chance, a little bit of planning. But yeah, I've always felt that like yeah, proof of concept is a good word for Crypto Kitties, and like it really showed what's possible. But like other games have always pushed the pushed the envelope in terms of actual gameplay. Yeah, and one of the key things that kind of drew me uh, to the game initially uh, was that uh, uh, I think the the Ether Monster itself, um, you actually each one of them have to be caught, and it, which means even the developer itself doesn't just magically come up with them. I think in in in, in my view as an investor at that time, uh, Crypto Kitty each design was kind of published by a designer, and then uh, pretty much they they sell it. Uh, and then you can breathe with it. But in Ethermon, even though the designer created, in order for them to give it out, they actually have to buy it from, from themselves, right, essentially. Uh, so that was kind of an interesting ecosystem, which everyone have to, like no one had the, the right to get the first one. Everyone has to compete to try to catch the first monster. Yeah, yeah and so then uh, for the game plan, it's like, I know there's other monster-based games. Sometimes they like roam around and uh, try to catch small monsters, fit in various, you know, clothing. Parts, <laughs> but um, you know, like how similar is the gameplay to like something we're all maybe familiar with, and, uh, and like how do you catch one? Yeah, yeah like how much is the battle system uh, separate right. from the catching system? Right. Yeah. So uh, most of the mods, uh, there is actually two mode. One of them we call uh, the official store mode, which is we launch a brand new design, uh, and where everyone is free to catch it. Uh, like we would announce a time where people can catch it. You can either catch it through the UI, the website, or you can actually catch it directly through a smart contract. The, the way that uh, Ethermon was developed is that it's, uh, we open up uh, to be a more of a decentralized ecosystem, which means you're not limited to having to use a centralized way to catch it. So anyone can, if they see the smart contract, they can operate at the same oh, time. Cool. So that makes it very interesting because you're not limited by a centralized world. You don't have to go to a website in order to catch it. The second method to catch it is we have something called adventure mode. So there was an interesting Japanese game called Frog's Adventure. It's something similar to that, which once you have an Ethermon, you can send it on, on 
sent it on an adventure, and about it's a randomized time between like、uh, five minutes up to an hour, where it might come back with some kind of loot, and that loot could be another Ethermon. So one of the the、uh, rare, one of the most、uh, rare Ethermon, the legendaries,、yeah. they have to be caught that way. So、of、you cannot course, just yeah. buy. Yeah. Yeah, and then you know, and then I assume there's a、um, you know, like is it a commit reveal thing where you're like got a second transaction? Yeah, yeah essentially,、uh, how it works is、uh, when you submit a transaction for it to go to the、uh, go on adventure, and once the timer is up in the contract, you're allowed to retrieve, submit a second transaction to retrieve、uh, whatever you happen to you know, the, whatever the randomized yeah, contract yeah, comes back. Yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I've seen a couple of similar things work there. It's nice to. See, it exists. You can do it in your own time. You're、right. like, okay, I got good enough for an adventure today.、Um, how, how was the gas cost in that? I know that one、yeah. of the things Ethereum games generally struggle、yeah. with、uh, is、yes. the gas cost. So definitely, I think uh, uh, it was very interesting because we started very early.、Uh, so therefore, initially, like every single because actually for the Ethermon game today,、uh, every single transaction. Uh, it started to be、uh, which you you need to make a transaction for everything, so which、yep. means every single battle,、uh, every single claim. In total, we actually have about forty contract that works with each other. Oh, that's so it's、cool. actually a very complicated decentralized game because every single function you can call it the, the, you know directly via the smart contract, which makes a big difference versus. I think nowadays you see more, which is since it is really I would call it more of a generation one、uh, game, yeah, uh, uh, NFT game, because people at that time didn't realize how much how cost it costs. And it is through、yeah. these games, you're like, oh, this costing so much. Well, so these days you will find most developers only minting the item while、yeah. keeping the、uh, rest of the game mechanism off chain. But then obviously you run into the problem of then are you really decentralized or rather? You, know, you just have yeah. It's, a, it's an aspect of like the blockchain、right. tech or whatever people want to call it these days is、yeah. is what is what they use. But yeah, it's hard to. It's something we've noticed over our time of doing this is、right. like what you call a block, what people call a blockchain game、yeah. is really like a big spectrum. Yeah, and yeah. you're like you have these fully decentralized games, and like I really I'm always on board、yeah. with that because like that's the dream, right? Right. You want to have the fully decentralized game, and like unfortunately, yeah, there is limiters in place on different things.、Uh, My favorite for now. My favorite game team literally built、yeah. a thing on a Tron. Okay.、Yeah. So you know, like people、yeah. do desperate things when there's not a lot of <laughs> options for blockchains、yeah. to build on. You know, like and right now there really isn't. Like、yeah. you know, you like ETH two is whenever.、Um, there's a few different like scaling concepts for ETH one. Yeah. And yeah. then there's like DPoS chains, right?、Mm -hmm. So there isn't really a lot of options for making a fully decentralized game. So it's really good to see you guys like、uh, sticking with it. And you're like, okay, no, we've got this far.、Yeah. You know, and it's nice. It's first generation game. You know, it's like you gotta stick to it. Yeah.、Uh, you mentioned that this wasn't originally your project, and then、yeah. you came. You yeah, I was about to、sure. ask him that. Yeah.、Sure. How did that? How did、sure. that transition go? Sure, sure. So I think uh, essentially uh, through because a little bit about my background. So I started off as a,、uh, a cryptocurrency mining.、Uh, so with the additional、uh, cryptocurrency. Uh, then I started looking into ICO project, and you know a lot of them. I would say after 2017, they didn't really do so well. Then at some point, I'm like, hey, because I have always been a, a game player enthusiast.、Yeah. So、actually, I was actually in the front front page of Toronto Star when Diablo 2 came out. Yeah, I was、nice. like, well, like. It's like no, it's, I, I was, right here, right, right. yeah, I was playing like like twenty hours a day. I was like、uh, top ranking for the first month for like top ten, like in the in the wizard class. I appreciate, but that. yeah, yeah a total game of Diablo. I know what you mean. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We all have so those, game, those game gamer, gamer <laughs> stories. Game where it's like, man, it's like, <laughs> actually, I thought of a podcast a while ago called <clears throat> "Super Cool Stories" that almost no one cares about. Yeah. <laughs> so you just get like people that on、cool. that just have this one story they really want to tell that、yeah. they are so proud of, but、yeah. it's like. It's It's really not like that big of a deal yeah, to anyone but them. But you know, like there'd be like some really good tidbits in there where、yeah. like this means a lot to me, and、yeah. here's why.、Yeah. And it would be like there'd be a lot of gaming stories where it's like, man, I grinded、right. so hard, <laughs> and the sword was mine. You know, well, that's like, what's cool about blockchain. Like、yeah. I ground on a game and、yeah. beat it,、oh, and found、true. it meaningless afterwards. Yeah, yeah it's like、uh, the blockchain is just the ultimate leaderboard. Yeah. You know, it's, like, it's my、uh, my scores are so good; they deserve、yeah. to be kept in perpetuity on everyone's computer. <laughs> That's、sure. just a fact. Yeah, my、no. score.、Sure. Yeah, my leaderboard must be there. Uh, yeah, uh, why don't we?、Uh, so the next part is、yeah. we got、uh, some slides that you were、yeah. going to run us through. So yeah, open yeah, yeah. We can, uh, okay, uh, we we can run through the slide, and I just want to talk about like、uh, from that、uh, we kind of went from like. Uh, Uh, yeah, let's let's talk about probably all the stuff I I have up here. It's like a it'll、um, probably come up in here somewhere. A mix of various different 
Uh, so we actually have uh, two games right now uh, under the same uh, project team. They're uh, cross compatible, right? Yeah, NFTs and they oh, are doing that. cross compatibility. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. So we actually created this game called Chain Guardians initially. Uh, and I would say that is a, almost a generation two blockchain gaming, which it focuses on the cryptoverse. So which means we are using assets from various different other games. So, so not just the game. Yeah, yeah I'm, always, I'm always a big fan of that. I guess my first quick yeah. question is, um, do the do the items do the same thing in both games, oh, or did never. you use it? it? it we we actually it's intentionally like. make a difference, which is when we create a chain guarding, we're like. Okay, we have you know our part, uh, one of our major partner like uh, Chain Breakers. Uh, they have weapons, so I'm like, why do we need to make weapons if they already have weapons? If they have legendary weapons, we don't need to make weapons. We just need we have our superhero uh, for a blockchain, which is Chain Guardians. So for the weapon system, a lot of it we could be using either you know my crypto hero's weapon or it could be Chain Breakers' weapons. And we start talking to them to say. Hey, we'd love to use your asset if you, you know, if you're okay with it, because it's on a smart contract. That's really cool because we can already read the assets and we know who has what. So that's super cool. Yeah. No, that's always handy, man. Uh, so yeah, I'll just talk a little bit maybe what about the, the project. So you see a mix of chain guardians and uh, uh, Ethereum on the first page, and this is kind of the list of the the, the kind of the key teams. Uh, we have essentially six core team members and uh, several other contractors that work with us. So I want to go through all of them. So Aiden is me. Uh, so Aiden, uh, myself and Jamie is based in Hong Kong. Robbie is based in UK. Emma is in Toronto. And uh, Eric, he is also based in Eco East Coast. I'm trying to remember where he is. And Press is in uh, India. So we're kind of really global team. Um, and so yeah, here's the, the three project again about our, our, our uh, slides here. Right. So how the, uh, the three stack work is, we have Ethermon, which is the traditional generation one game. But in order for you to do gen two games, you actually need several things. Uh, one thing is how do you be able to know a single user, do they have multiple different blockchain? Because we're not just covering a single blockchain, we can cover multiple different blockchain. I thought Ethereum yeah. was just on Ethereum. Yeah. Oh yeah. Ether. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So when we move to Generation Two game, which that's is a good tech though. Chain Guardians. We have the stack. Uh, our system is, is actually a uh, aliasing system. So uh, you can say it's similar to ENS, yeah. Ethereum name service, except we cover multiple crypto and also multiple address. So ENS, your single address mapped to a single domain name. Okay. For us, it's a single immutable name. It's a public alias but it can be mapped to multiple address and across different blockchains. Oh, so uh, can I cross uh, Bitcoin and Ethereum, for yes, example? Yes, correct. So oh, if I own them on, on Ethereum, yes. can I own it on Bitcoin through the same? Oh, I think the, we don't care about where the ownership is, is we just trying to capture that you have multiple different accounts. Or it could be multiple Ether account, or you have a Bitcoin and Ether account. You might, let's just say, I mean, Bitcoin really don't have assets right now, but let's just say NEO or EOS or, or Tron, another platform which have assets. All of a sudden, we recognize all of that is under your account. We can now pull all of them, so we can play with all of them at the same time. That's kind of the uh, the key goal and, of what safe thing is trying to achieve. Those, so if I have, I can take any of my currently owned addresses on any chain. So yep. I have an active Ethan and Tron address yep. where I have some random tokens, and yep. then I register those through yep. your thing and basically yep. claim ownership. Correct. Prove ownership. Correct. Prove ownership of your address, and then, and then all of a sudden you can play with all of them. Play, and then does that also enable things like uh, receive? Uh, it well, well, I guess like, what would you people need... be able to derive see my address if I let so them? that so, so privacy centric was what we really focused on, oh, good, which means is... you can add your address and then you don't have to make it public, but we know it's you. So which means the system know you, no one can query it. So only when you play the game, it knows that you have these addresses. So it's actually a very powerful system because all of a sudden, because most of the time uh, everything is transparent on the blockchain if you do chain analysis. Yeah. So. Uh, so in this system, which you could have a whole bunch of assets, you can play in your account, but no one really know that you have it. So actually, that's actually very powerful. So that's actually something we really focus on too. And is that privacy by system. default or privacy by force? Um, so uh, privacy on the first uh, uh, item. So your first address, it's uh, public by default, just because otherwise there's nothing you can look up. Because right now every single address, it's, it's pretty much just one, but all the additional one you add will be by force. So you could add a burner. 
Yeah. You can correct. start out with an empty address. Yeah, exactly. And just yeah, not exactly. Pay. Exactly. But, but it, that's it, just to, to anchor the system. Yeah, to anchor the system. But in reality, if you look at it, every single other uh, system today, because I mean, originally what we did is we set even the first address to be private, but then you don't have anything, right? You just have a name. So then what purpose is that serving? So we end up having uh, creating say, okay, by the, the first one is public, just like any other system, your public address, anyone can look you up to see what assets you have. So I don't think it really makes that big a difference, but we could obviously, you could go and, you know, set it. Yeah, can you set public, them public as well? Because yeah, it would be like, uh, this would give another way, like the same way that the dot ETH domains work, yeah. where someone can send money to you. Correct. They could register. These are my addresses on each chain, yeah. as opposed to. Yeah, I mean, we there. actually originally started looking at to say, hey, we're going to use the domain name system. That was exactly what our starting point. And we're like, okay, so what if I tell you I own Iden.eth, and then two years later I decided not to do it, and then Did I said, hey, pay me. Bitcoin? And then you know someone may have taken it, right? But yeah, uh, Nincoin was uh, another ecosystem that we look at. But anyways, at the end of the day, we de decide to develop something our own because not only just the aliasing, we actually do chain analysis in the back end. Mm -hmm. Because what what we initially when we developed this, we wanted to develop an ecosystem to do protection against a lot of stuff, which is a current problem in the NFT game. Number one is uh, like airdrop or like player playing with multiple accounts. Because yeah, technically, you, through chain analysis, you can actually flag. Yeah, be really obvious. Problem. My accounts. I when I do, uh, there's a few games yeah. where I feel like uh, like Zero X Universe was yeah. one, yeah, yeah. where they actually it was actually incentivized to multi account, yeah. right. and it we was a little bit annoying. About it. Yeah. yeah, so I, I played that game a bunch and got a bunch yeah. of planets, but it was yeah. incentivized, and anyone who looked at my history could have yeah. told tell that like every now and then, right. I pop some ether over to this address, and then it starts playing the same yeah. game that this one's playing, yeah. and then. A few week, you know, a few weeks later, another address activates, yeah. and it's all you know the same order. So I think it's definitely a challenge, but I think all of that is actually okay. But yeah, I think it should be uh, built around because yeah. it should be accepted. And you shouldn't. Yeah, have it's it, it's, it's not an issue the because then at a certain point in, in time, we're like, okay, but at some time, if you want to combine all your assets, then now you have to move all of them back together. So if there's a method for you to just tie them together when you need to, then that's yeah, just when you need yeah. to. Yeah. The other thing is uh, with Ethereum, just moving the assets, and then there's the fact the uh, yeah. the transactions have to confirm in order. Yeah, and that actually affects uh, your gaming ability. Yeah, because like sometimes you want to do something uh, much faster, like and just like get it done, and yeah. sometimes you're like, I don't care when this transaction goes through. Right, and you can't do both those things at the same time yeah. with Ethereum yeah. unless you're multi accounting. Yeah, and that's just comes with using Ethereum as the gaming platform it was always meant to be. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, so, I think it seems like we've talked a lot about yeah. the backbone and the technological underpinnings of yeah. what you're doing. Yeah, let's keep going we with the games. Just, yeah, the games. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah maybe so we'll on. jump a little bit into the game. Uh, we can talk maybe firstly about the Ethermon game itself. Uh, maybe we can go to the Ethermon website itself. Um, do, you want to, do we want to jump to the Ethermon website? Okay, let's look at the rest of the slide. Okay, okay, okay. okay. So, after. with the Ethermon slide, if you go, can go to the Chain Guardian game, uh, the next slide. So, we actually have brought a very interesting concept now that we enable the phase of the Gen 2 stack. Uh, through this uh, safe name, the uh, .io aliasing, is now we create a concept called NFT proof of stake. Okay, so which means you can take an NFT and now you can things. get proof of stake because like uh, with a lot of coins right now, like uh, let's just say like Dash Coin or something like that, you can you know stake a master node and get some interest. But NFT, if you buy it, if you don't play with it, then you know there's no income. So we created this ecosystem focusing on proof of stake on your NFT. Uh, because I did mining as a background, so end up creating a, uh, a ecosystem which you can mine with your NFT. So what we did is we worked with seven other different games to say, okay, my Ethermon is worth a certain hash rate. Your CryptoKit is based on this hash rate. Based on its value and its uh, rarity, then you have a hash rate for each one. So then you can add, you can go to our game, it's uh, live on chainguardians.io, select your NFTs and you can mine. And you can do a competitive gameplay, which I, I can show you after, which you can mine tokens uh, as well as uh, various different things from it just by proof of stake. I have not heard of that before. I really yeah. like that. Yeah, I like that. because Something to do with your tokens from different games. It, against, uh, and if proof of stake was purely coin-based, it would disincentivize asset ownership, right? Imagine, well, now Ethereum longs to be proof of stake, theoretically. Yeah. I think they're getting One there day. now. But what I mean is, if you had assets and it was all, would you really want to take all your coins out of Ether 
into NFTs when you can stake your Ether and you can't stake your NFTs. Right. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because there's quite a bit. Uh, we actually talked a little bit with MakerDAO uh, because they were also interested in doing collateralized loan with NFTs. Oh my God. But they then, would. Uh, <laughs> that, don't do it. <laughs> Don't so, listen to him. It's a great idea. No, it's not. So, yeah. but the challenge was always okay. But how much do I value the NFT? Do I go by these three scenarios uh, that we've been talking about? Uh, one is you can uh, uh, decide on value the NFT through market pricing, okay? Which is what is the latest transaction? But that has a huge problem with the earlier problem we talked about is if it's just based on the last sold, I can buy and sell to my buy yeah and sell to right myself. away. You, that's yeah. the first thing. So, I so that's, yeah. a, that's the first thing you, you thought, and that's why we have a solution to counter that through chain analysis. Um, second one then is uh, uh, you just base um, uh, actual uh, based on machine learning. So some people actually do say, hey, I'm going to use some AI algorithm. Machine learning is popular these days to determine value. And the third method which we're going by is. We take a list of SME, subject matter experts, which know this game and knows you know, certain things. Just because it's more rare or less quantity does not mean it's more uh, valuable, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's less because no one wants it. That's why it never end up having so many. Um, and then we also work with the developer, each one to say, okay, based on this, this is the valuation we would like. So all of a sudden you have a model of valuation of these NFT, you know, based on three different criteria. So it, yeah, it's got, that's something we are doing to be able to do uh, proof of stake uh, on NFTs. And then what's the reward for the uh, proof of stake? Uh, so NFTs? it starts to be we issue our own uh, coins, which you can get, uh, which is only through this mining. But later, uh, so, so because we're partnering with different games, other game may have NFT tokens itself or other games, uh, uh, ERC20, that they can also issue. So it's not limited to a certain... Yeah, uh, then you can use this as a way to give away, like, okay, yeah. if, if you're staking, yeah. there's a one in X chance per hash. Right, and we, we make it more interesting where you can do something like, okay, today's, like, this week's quest is if you can get three cats from three different games, then you triple your your, your rate. From different so, games. Yeah, you so you have, have meta quests now. Right? Yeah, yeah. Meta yeah. quests yeah. are yeah. between different games. Yeah, like Crypto Kitty yeah. obviously have a cat, like Ethermon, we have one cat, so you gotta have to, you know... And, Games like like most games would have a daily quest, yeah. but I've never seen a game where the daily quest can require me to do a thing in a different game. Yeah, that's an interesting yeah. idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we also so we also allow the rental market because there's the rental market for NFT. We have an internal rental market. Oh, so like if I want to borrow your so stuff, right, exactly. If you don't have it, if you need a quest, you don't have to buy it, or you can borrow it. So that's yeah, kind so of that's always been like you found for like uh, card games and stuff. Yeah. It's like you could just like rent out the legendaries or the yeah. deck even like where it's like okay i want to play with your deck for a while but i don't want to buy all the cards like i'll give you like this much to use it for a day and then it's like yeah. you get to try the best cards with like a, a properly made deck that's you know top of the ladder and i don't have to pay anything right. or i pay a tiny bit and then if i'm not using right. my deck well, okay i'll run yeah. it out for a week yeah exactly yeah so it's nice to see you. Yeah, yeah things like that are all uh, <laughs> it's nice to see you're doing a lot of the different things that yeah. like watching games uh have to strive for, yeah, and like, yeah, they, uh, they usually don't accomplish. So I, I realize one thing in particular that like it's gonna pull us back to technical back end stuff, and I know you need to get on to chain guardians. Oh yeah, yeah. But, but but it's so when you mentioned the, your use of chain analysis for your yeah. game, I, I suddenly realized how powerful that is because I remembered like back in Hunter Coin, for example. Uh, we had a situation where one pseudonymous player took over the game. Yeah. And part of his genius was he had multiple accounts and we didn't know which all of them were his, so he could make multiple plans. Yeah, so if you were able to... If you had integrated yeah. chain analysis with yeah. Huntercoin, the Huntercoin's domination method may have failed. Yeah, because yeah, you would have been able to track down which fact, was which. Yeah. And I thought, like, you'll hear, like, the last... Coinfest, where we did the blockchain gaming. I'll probably do it again. I keep talking about a Turing test right. for blockchain okay. games, where he would also not. Sh I mean, obviously, all a thousand of them are at him. One of them's him. Nine hundred ninety-nine are his AI bots. Yeah. You know, if we one, if we could, AI, if we could use chain analysis to detect the pattern of flow, we could know they're yeah. all one person's exactly. bot. Exactly. No other. Exactly. If we could just detect an AI player yeah. in the first place, that would be powerful. But, you know, chain analysis, I really, there's no, 
Uh, and we all, you have to trust the analyzer. I mean. Yeah, it's gonna be a while till identity yeah. is solved. Uh, so we're 25 minutes in. Oh, so we yeah, keep okay, going. yeah. Get to the, we're gonna get yeah. to some game demo soon. Okay. We just wanna run a, get your, Get, yeah, get for sure. I uh, just want to talk a little bit about our design process. So uh, in our Chain Guardian game, we're really developing superhero for blockchain. So we're designing like, we, we usually spend about two months to develop every single new character. So like the two of the big ones that we've developed so far, one is for Matic Network. So uh, Matic is a plasma chain yeah, for Yeah, Matic's also, I was uh, talking recently, yeah. and they've been doing a lot of good things lately. Oh yeah, yeah, they've been doing, I think they just recently made like top 50 in the uh, coin market cap. Oh, yeah, really? they just made it to it. Yeah, oh, yeah. For the, but but they went a, a spike, that's, and I think it's back a little yeah. bit. That's how yeah. it goes around here, though. Yeah. So that's okay. You yeah. don't you don't hold that against people. Like yeah. that's just how like that's how things grow. Right. But it's it's uh, it's gone up a few times this year. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. And that's because they're actually delivering on some stuff. And I oh, noticed yeah. they're signing a lot of the gaming related stuff. Seems like they're really focused on that. Oh yeah, yeah. So we've been working very closely with this, kind of trying to push an uh, envelope of uh, cross chain play between side chain and main chain. Because the key thing is. At the end of the day, <clears throat> end of the, day the powerful part about Plasma is you don't lose the token, right? Even though it's on a side chain, but you can always do a Plasma exit, even if the side chain fails. So I think that's a very powerful part. I'm of kind of mad at ignorance. They use Plasma? Yeah. Oh, I yeah. see. So, so it's, it's a, just a Plasma side chain? Yeah, it's a, it's a Plasma side chain. So full EVM, but the side chains are kind of tied to the root. So I think every like 10, oh, sorry, I, I shouldn't quote the number, but every number of transactions they will sync with the main chain so that everything on the side chain still get the so i'm guessing you guys are open to a lot of partners like that like scalability of yeah oh yeah definitely so to, to an earlier point about a generation one is scalability issues we're definitely looking at how to scale various different game to make it feasible um i want to pull down a few more few more slides to see what else is there yeah we talked a lot yeah we can, we can skip that we can skip 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 yeah I, uh one more maybe yeah, okay, so I want to talk about one more concept here. So this is the, the part where the, the two games integrate. So you have the Chain Guardian game, which is a mobile RPG built on Unity. So all of a sudden, because obviously you need to log in and you can see your Chain Guardian character you can play with. So we needed, uh, then we added this mode called Plains of Historian, where Chain Guardian can fight Ethermons. So Ethermon becomes an NPC. But according to which gameplay rules? It's well, it, so for in this particular case, Ethermon is integrating uh, because it's a sorry. Uh, Chain Guardian is the it's the uh, it's a Gen two game, right? So it's Chain Guardian that's integrating the uh, assets from the other game. So then it's using Ethermon. So as I like can use my Ethermon within Chain Guardian. Yeah, but in a sense, it's another proof of stake. What we're doing is Ethermon. You're using we're using the Ethermon's IP as a NPC in the game. So when oh, the cool. NPC NFT Ooh. kills your, because usually when you play the game, you're spending some, some kind of money, right? Uh, because to yeah. revive or to speed up and something like that. For the NPC, when you kill you, it takes some of the profit, usually that goes to a centralized developer, and give it to the owners that own that so NFT I, asset. I stake my NFT That's what I was game. gonna say. Yeah. Yeah. Where we well, you don't, you, you don't even asking. have to stake. Like, oh, it, it automatically stays. Oh, so everyone who has one. When anyone who has that monster that gets a every, split so of the every profit. Every monster in the game, yeah. or a, a large majority, yeah. it is actually owned by someone else. Yes, correct. So just by owning the correct. monster, it's existing in other people's gameplay. Correct, way. correct. Oh, that's because so cool. you own yeah. the IP, because technically, let's just say, Isidro Kazan, what I'm ex uh, showing here, it's a leverage generator Easter month. Over a period of one year, only 22 people caught it. So these 22 people automatically get the profit From split between the Exactly, it. exactly. My, uh, something you just said there that was really key to me is you own the IP. Yes. So uh, one of the things we've seen in this industry as are the, the dreams of this industry yeah. and how they've crumbled is things like IP uh, for decentralized technologies. Now we have a really close uh, relationship with that here. Yeah. We used to be called Decentral okay. and now we're called Decontrol because yeah. of an IP issue. Yeah. Um, so, and then CryptoKitties uh, released their license a while back about yeah, their game. Nifty, yeah. yeah, the Nifty license. It was heavy with IP ownership yeah. of the art, which yeah. is like, you know, you kind of got to expect, but it was really like yeah. against maybe the ethos. So with you saying that, yeah. maybe if you could, I don't know, we're getting yeah, back to this stuff, but I'd yeah. love to hear about your, uh, yeah. how you handle IP right. on something that is well, yeah. token. It's part of what you said was yeah. some people claim is the downfall of the original person who made Ethermon? Yeah, Ethermon. There, there was the Ethermon, which was where we acquired, uh, which the, the project evolved into all version. Who did they piss off? 
so they didn't piss off anyone, but it was the ethermon.com, uh, which was, uh, my understanding is they took some IPs to, with, with sell essentially consent. They just took it and tried to make a like token. Like the artwork? And, tried the... Essentially artwork. and not Pokemon IP, like, yeah. like other like artists from like, yeah. you know, uh, yeah. wherever. They call it a fake Pokemon community that has the, that, you know, that to, took the artwork. So in, in the Ethermon's case, essentially we spent a lot of time it, it, essentially going to their community as well to make sure we have a strong connection with each of the artists that's providing original design. Because some of them are very popular, like, uh, 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 like we have quite a few like uh, uh, Asvia uh, and also like um, uh, Lewis. There's quite a few arts. We, we use a sep seven of them currently. And all, some of them have very beautiful design. So when we license them, we try to make sure, we, we do make sure with them that we have either full commercial exclusive license, do we have license to modify, or do we have license to uh, be able to create derivative work out of it? Like for example, in this case, like Barkento is made by Osmia. Yeah. And sure, so obviously, you know, I need to get his agreement to say, yeah, I actually make a derivative work out of it. So we, we go very much into to making sure that we have the, the rights to make them because they're very important. And to the point which we also want to promote, uh, co-promote, which is really good for both the original artists and artists. Yeah, and my question is more based around, so when you sell me an NFT, with a piece of art attached yes. to it, how does that yeah. uh, transaction work IP-wise? Yeah, so uh, I think essentially we're kind of following with CryptoKitty and Nifty is doing, which is uh, technically you can display that NFT's artwork into anywhere else you want, but which you can't you can make put your own in the, Yeah, you cannot make the derivative work, uh, and you cannot uh, essentially a sub license, right? So, but uh, for us, if we have a license, then we need to make sure we have the commercial license. So we're not passing down a further license, but except you can display your NFT artwork anywhere you like, yeah. like in Crypto Voxel, in the Central Land, as you like. Oh, wait a minute, you. So my, Not as cool as I thought it was going to be an answer, but uh, yeah, reasonable. That's, it's so reasonable. It yeah. is. It's, Originally, it's, it's such that it. someone else, if they wanted to form a company yeah. and start making Ethermon, they yeah. could. Like, you have a yeah. license with the original. Like, there's Artists, more than one yes. company involved in this ecosystem. Yes. Yes. So, or entities. Yeah. Yeah, there's more than one entities in this ecosystem. So what if another one arose yeah. that wants to make games and mon? Yeah. Would you two each make different mon? Like, I think if you made a mon, yeah. and I suddenly, I'm not going to do yeah, this, right. but suddenly like, made my own. Because yeah. uh, that's essentially what you did, right? Yes. You've taken a lot of people, I mean, this is the nature of open source yeah. tech. That's the double-edged sword of it, that people could do what you did. Mm -hmm. Would they have to use your mon, or would they make their own mon? And could you not put their mon in your mon game? Yeah, you know what I mean. I, I think it's a lot of it coming down to agreement because I think there's two aspects you want to to worry about. First thing is when you are going to take Barkindo and let's just say you re represent that, some is that other Barkindo? way. Oh, yeah, this is that's Barkindo, Barkindo the fire that's combat. Barkindo. <laughs> he's cute. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jealous. yeah, you can look up Bakken though, yeah. like he's like kind of all uh, kind of get yours today. Yeah, oh, we're, we're going mass production with these uh, merchandise. Uh, oh, really? The plush toys, yeah. Oh, okay. The so first eventually, in, I, I was I mean, building. Do you have an extra one around? It will be delivered here soon. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's it's almost done production. I'll try to rush it before Christmas. Oh, chill. Yeah, I was going to say, guys, Christmas is like next week. Okay. Yeah, I know. We just, just missed the production time. Like, there's two versions of it, one in the dot com. Mail his kids one for Christmas. Yeah. But eventually he said... Chinese like, New Year. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's, that's, he yeah. said he could do cool stuff with this, like like put an NFC chip in it and yeah. like go down, oh, yeah. like the one, like this one's 3D printable. Yeah. I mean, oh, right. I mean, I guess, come to think of it, like I could print a public key, but how could I prove that I'm, I mean, I could use a master seed yeah. and use a different public key generated from the seed every time yeah. and no two figurines should have the same one. Right. So we're thinking about ways to print one and prove that like no one who doesn't own, yeah. I mean, have you you've thought about this? Yeah, event, oh, oh, right? definitely. So I actually have an item on my hand. What? So it has a, it's a, it's a watch. It's a, a collector undone watch. Uh, the brand is actually undone. It's a uh, X uh, Rolex uh, bracelet uh, craftsman that makes weird. this brand, Beep. and no. yeah, it has an NFC chip. So I, I, maybe it's a little bit far from the camera, but if you tap it to the phone, 
it will come up with the Chain Guardian's website and it's an nice. authentic article. And this chip is <laughs> tied to a token. Sweet. So therefore the two is actually binded. So it's actually not only counterfeit or not, but it's actually tied to your online token. Very sweet. Yeah. So not only counter not counterfeit and not stolen. Yeah. yeah. Correct. Yeah, so yeah. we've been looking at working with the, the developer, which is called Electrix, on uh, cool. making this into other locations. Like it could be a letter tag or something. You know, as long as it's not waterproof because it does require a little bit. The electronics. So, my yeah. story, in case you're throwing the wash it, it may not work. I really right. think the 3D printability makes sense if we're thinking long term. Because, like, like, imagine you were playing a card game and you wanted to play with paper cards, like Pokemon cards. There could be Ethermon cards in the same yeah. way. If you could print it, then you could play physically with the ease of purchasing them yeah. online. The problem, we didn't do that before because if I let you use your printer to print your cards out, you would lie and just print all the cards. All so the strongest like, ones. I have 10 black lotuses, obviously, like which you don't. So, we didn't talk about this earlier, but we are uh, partnering with uh, Tides of Magic, okay. which is the, the collectible card game, uh, which uses other NFTs. So as long as you have an Ethermon, you have a Tides of Magic card. Uh, in the, the digital game, which is you know very similar to Gods on Chain, etc. So we've been talking about a method to solve exactly that problem. So first of all, some people still like to play the physical card game. Yeah, so all yeah. you need to do though is when you have an, another application. So when you are playing a card, all you need to do is scan the card to see mm -hmm. do your private key yeah. have that to that card. So you can randomly sample uh, to yeah, see if just, you actually just have it. Prove ownership. Then prove that yeah, ownership yeah. that you actually have that card in the tournament yeah, mode. Without bringing so, your yeah, actual cards with correct. you or bringing your private key. Correct, yeah. Correct. yeah, that doesn't have a lot of options. Um, yeah. So we've okay. got two games yeah. uh, today. You're going to show us Ethermon cool. and Chain Guardians. Yes. Um, so why don't yeah. we switch over here and let me put the mic over for you guys. You can take yeah. the, um, the master share here. So first of all, I just want to show like the backend system that makes everything work. So essentially, you log into a system, you have this uh, credit risk score that computes based on, do you have a brand new account? Uh, you know, do you have do you have uh, you know funds that's stolen uh, that's sent to you, etc. To give you a credit, credit, credit score. score. It's essentially it's a risk rating score. We call it credit. I score. don't want to know my credit score. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Really so written. the demo part. So I think we talked about earlier. It's a multi crypto addressing. Uh, you can kind of verify multiple address, you can hide and show your public profile. So in that sense, uh, that enables the, the Chain Guardians game. So I'll kind of talk about that briefly. Uh, so Chain Guardian, it's a mobile RPG, but in the back end, we talked about earlier about the NFT uh, proof of stake uh, mining. So what happened is so we had block 3000. It was kind of like Bitcoin every 20 minutes, we generate a new block. And in this past 20 minutes, we have essentially like uh, uh, I guess this is like 10 different player that plays it. So it depends on the NFT that you had, you will be given a total hash rate and every 20 minutes you get some reward just by having NFT and you put this in this game. Some NFTs are worth more than others. Yeah, so exactly. So that's why uh, some people have higher hash rate because they have higher, more valuable NFTs. Some people them. disagree on the value yeah. of an NFT. Correct. So that's why what we talked about earlier there is a we we work on three different ecosystems. The main one we're going by right now is a subject matter expert. So we take the best expert mm. that does crypto case evaluation, the, the players itself. Uh, of course, yeah. We'd love to get you know, depends <laughs> on if you qualify as a as a, <laughs> a certain game. Is this a paid position? <laughs> right. Well but then we also have to scrub it with original developer to say, do you agree? Does this make mm -hmm. sense? So it's actually a balance between us, the SME and the developer. Um, this is a native token, CGC. Yeah, so CGC right now, this is actually the in-game, uh, uh, what you It's an in-game uh, coin uh, that's for our platform. It's actually right now, this one is not ERC721, uh, uh, but it does have a, a peg to another token that, that is ERC, sorry, not an ERC20, it does have a peg to an ERC20 that we're working on. Mm. Um, okay, but in the sense in the block reward, it doesn't have to be CGC. So this is our native uh, token, which I'll t uh, uh, coin, which I'll talk about uh, later on. But then any of this could have been a NFT drop. It could be an actual token, depending on because when we do the NFT mining game, uh, you can mine from seven different games, and Jeez. some of these other developers can provide uh, additional token and incentive. 
uh, for the top winners. So it's essentially it's like an airdrop program, but based on proof of stake uh, uh, mining. But at minimal, you will get some CGC token, which I'll talk more uh, about in our main game. But before I uh, go to that, I know I jump back and forth a little bit. Oh, One okay. of the things you can do uh, mining with is obviously Ethermon, which we talked about earlier. And uh, Ethermon is a game because because I now locked the MetaMask. We have a total of IP of over 300 unique monsters. So each one, like Zero Kazan, is a unique monster, uh, and then the Pegasus, etc. Do these their ether values? Oh yeah. So this is actually uh, the marketplace. So people are actually listing them. So we have our internal mm. contract to do market. So kind of like any other uh, secondary marketplace. Uh, the, the the big ones right now is obviously OpenSea, and there's one in uh, uh, Asia called the uh, Spiderdex. So they are kind of the big one. Ethermon started before these projects actually came about. So therefore we needed to have developed our own market contract. So everything is actually, uh, all the smart, this is actually smart contract order book. So uh, all the transaction over on the, the smart contract. So essentially we have the equivalent of a small open CNO ecosystem. But then later on, because that is not our main focus, although we have the capability, uh, we let these other players to do, you know, auction houses, etc. like open C. Oh yeah. Uh, so if, are these, because if they're ERC-20 tokens, how oh, sorry, can they, they, they have... They are 721. They are 721. Can those have levels? Like, uh, uh, Yeah. Yes. So like in ERC-21, you can assign ongoing editable values yes. to so a 721 how, asset. Yeah, so how it works is most ERC-721 are not upgradable. So in order most, for you to... Most are not upgradable. But yours are? Ours are. So what happened in order for you to do it, you have to actually have a storage contract mm -hmm. on top of it. So you have to build your ERC-721 you on top of it. Yes, correct. Which we do. Um, actually, Ethermine is a very complicated game because again, we talked about earlier, there's a total of 40 small contracts. So everything from claiming an energy to doing a battle, everything is stored on chain. Uh, recently, more recently, we moved part of it off chain, so it's kind of semi, but most of the transaction is still fully on chain, including the marketplace, storage, upgrading your experience, etc., is fully on chain. So it does extend beyond a, a 721 standard so in order for you to be able to store the uh, experiences and level up uh, over it in on the I was just blockchain. curious. So that, that there's two separate smart contracts Correct. one tracking ownership and one. The values, yeah. the additional values applied to Correct. those assets. So you can think of it this way that you start with a base database of items, right? So then each item is in an item in your 721. Then you kind of put a wrapper, which is the, the function of the 721 as the token on top. So therefore, when you need to upgrade, you still need to talk to the base database on chain. So that's kind of how it works. But you will find a lot of today's game, they're all only doing a 721, which they're only tokenizing the asset, but not doing on-chain upgrades. So which means if technically the developer goes away, you might, and you know, you don't have right. metadata You're API, again. you are back to level one where you just have an asset. So that's a, that's that. a big issue. That correct? sounds horrible. So therefore, I think it's very interesting because this uh, Ethermon is kind of like a pure decentralized game, which everything is on-chain. Everything is a contract. All the upgrades uh, is on-chain. Well, we still need a browser to access it. Yeah, currently uh, you do need browser. You can uh, use uh, uh, obviously the uh, uh, mobile. Well, almost almost well, every mobile game wallet. still needs a browser to access yeah. it. I mean, there are very yeah. few blockchain games that have Correct. done that. Correct. So, which uh, talks about our next one, which we will talk about our Chain Guardian main game. Oh yeah, we can do our this demo now. This one is an APK. So, which means it is a mobile game without a browser. We just talked about the browser part. So this is actually running on Can an emulator Can you click it right, right in this window? Does it work? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, are we supposed to go to the big screen here or? No, the, what, what's the window we have it open from? It's there, uh, no, try them all. There, somewhere, there. It's at this one, this one right here. Oh, oh there, there we go. go. Okay, cool. awesome. So yeah, this is actually a mobile, mobile game. I am already logged in, okay. but this is what enables a Gen 2 game, which is you do need a system in the back end that can ties multiple address. Or this one's Chain address. Guardians. This is Chain Guardians. So we can put Ethermon in Chain Guardians. So we got to clarify for people. Yeah, Ethermon appears as an NPC character in this game. Usable and or playable or seeable in this yeah. game. Correct, correct. correct. I, I guess we could say useful. Yeah, useful. Ethermon assets are useful Correct. in this game he's got Correct. to show. Correct. Let's see. 
Yeah, so let's go through this. Uh, again, this is uh, uh, one of the what we call Gen 2 game. Uh, it doesn't have any CG in mind to keep on playing. Oh no. Uh, because this is a. Uh, let me see if I can actually re log in. Oh uh, no. Yeah. Great so it costs out. CGC to play. Yeah, it costs CGC to play. So uh, we're actually airdropping from now till. TBD and uh, we'll be airdropping every new user in their CGC so they can get started. I have questions here. about this, yeah. just curious technically. Yeah. It requires them be to pay miners or because it's a utility token by concept? Why do they need to play? Or for the developers? I mean, there's a lot of... Yeah. So I think it's more the economy that we're looking at because the thing is, in order for us to pay the NFTs such as Ethermon. You have smart contracts to pay Correct. if you do a forum. Uh, so we have, it's a combination of smart contract and non-smart contract. Uh, so, but what happened is with creating a ecosystem with, with these coins, um, the reason why if you require the CGC, although you can also do mining of it, is that we needed to assign some kind of value that the Ethermon, when they are beating up the chain guardians, that they can be assigned these uh, tokens or coins which are actually have value. So that's kind of what we try to do. Uh, let me see if I can actually get it started today because I'm trying to figure out what it wants. To clear cash. Oh, uh, maybe when you installed it, it's so it's got a local wallet. Maybe you yeah, had to supply it, the local wallet. Let maybe. me see if I can do a uh, testnet. Testnet this. Yeah, because uh, we just, just installed it this year today. I'm trying to see if I can do a uh, yeah. uh, a cleanup. Otherwise, we'll run it one more time, or maybe we can't uh, do the full demo today. Well, you played it from your laptop, yeah? Yes, correct. And your laptop, does that mean your laptop has this, the in CGC token? Oh, so all I'm doing is uh, the token is tied to my safe name account. So I'm just logging oh, in. So, so I think... if you're logged in as yourself, that should be all that matters. Yeah, correct. That's all that matters. Okay. So all you need to do is you have your so, all right, I uh, see. login accounts. Um, we, we haven't yet integrated the MetaMask Connect here, uh, but that's something those we're are looking at. Those today. are key though. Yeah, yeah, correct, correct. Every uh, blockchain gamers, yeah. All of us have a MetaMask. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah I yeah. used to do, I don't know, Chibi Fighters. Just, I, I was big on Chibi Fighters. Oh, uh, okay. Anyone who's done blockchain gaming yeah. has used MetaMask. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Long for sure. story short. Yeah, we're just, this is actually haven't been launched publicly yet. So we're kind of just, this is actually the first time we're showing in the, in the public uh, way recording here. Oh, uh, good for us. Show. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Sneak think, peeks for us. Yeah, I think I may not be able to get it started today because of the That's so weird. The, the cash thing. Because this is a brand new uh, setup. I'm trying to see because it's not even asking me for my login. So. Oh, well, what was the other thing you were gonna do? You were gonna demo. Uh... Yeah, so essentially what I wanted to show is the, the Chain Garden gameplay, uh, but that's okay. I'm gonna at least show that we can. Uh, go over to oh, the but... website and kind of show you what happened in the back end. So essentially in the back end, through the mining we talked about earlier, you can get CGC, but every time there's a game, gameplay... This is your, your staking this much? Yeah, correct. Uh, so you have 97 CGC. Per what? Per day? Per month? Oh, this or... is the total. This is actually, uh, this is just Forever. the amount of CGC I have. Forever. So you accumulate oh, over time I see. as I do mining. And then, uh, so I mean, technically to get started, you can have any NFT. Right now we're airdropping a hundred CGC for every single account. And well, then, it has to be from a game that's partnered with you, right? Uh, for right now, it's just anyone that sign up with an account and verify an address. So then we will provide you with it. We are doing some chain analysis in the back end to make sure you don't create like, <laughs> too many addresses, yeah. Uh, but to kind of pr protect the value of the CGC. And in terms like, um, especially like in the blockchain gaming community, yeah. like on our Facebook group and yeah. Telegram, you, I bet you'll find people willing to cross-pollinate NFTs. Oh yeah, for sure. So we actually big just to kind of come back to the Ethermon a little bit, like Tizer Magic, uh, we have that integration. Uh, we're actually talking to the uh, folks at Flower Patch, 
uh, we also talked to it. Patch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's actually a very interesting yeah. uh, game they have there. Uh, so we've been talking to them. There's uh, quite a few uh, different games that we're talking about. Obviously, you know, Ethermine integrated the Chain Guardian, uh, so there's quite a bit of stuff. So I think what we'll do is, since we can't do a demo here, I'll probably supplement like a video afterwards so we can, you know, put a link to it so people can see the, the gameplay. It's pretty easy it. to find, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah. Are there video YouTube video availabilities of the gameplay you were going to show? Yeah, so the alpha is going to release just before Christmas. So today is the... It's got to watch. Look at this guy. Yeah. <laughs> the, the Ching Guardians watch. I think today's the 20th, actually, right? Uh, yeah, 19th. Yeah. Not yet. Uh, right. In a couple hours. 20th in be... Asia, potentially. <laughs> it's because my watch, I, I, you know, I obviously come from Hong Kong. Your flight's so on the 20th. Uh, yeah, exactly. Tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, so uh, no, we'll provide a link to the video and it will be available by the time, by the time the, this, uh, this video gets posted. All right, cool. Well, I mean, um, hmm. it's a shame we couldn't, I'm kind of curious yeah. why, if it's supposed to be account based, it should work on any yeah, machine. Yeah, I'm just trying to figure out this, uh, what you guys, it's not even asking me to log in, I'm just trying to figure out how to reset. But you know, the, uh, this is a communal computer, it's probably not something we should figure out during our broadcast. Yeah, okay. Maybe. God knows, people could... Yeah, because we just installed a blue stack here, so I'm like, hmm, <laughs> should I put in my credential here or not? <laughs> yeah, you should always be careful on communal yeah. machines. There was a little bit of limitation here, right? I couldn't really log in because I can't, you know, include, you know, provide my private key here with, uh, uh, into, the, into the MetaMask here to be, just to be careful. No, I think we got the idea. Okay, cool. It was cool you brought these plushies. Yeah. So, you no, know, like... Uh, Anyone, this guy's wanting to hand out. You can three. Wait, can anyone three D print these? Uh, we do have all the files. Uh, we haven't provided. Uh, we haven't provided to anyone, but uh, it's something we could consider. But we are gonna produce. Then uh, this uses as a model to mass produce. Well, we'll see this guy again. Yeah. And uh, we're gonna. Uh, any final comments? Oh no, uh, I guess uh, we are uh, again mass producing the plushies, so we'll leave a few here. If you guys are ever going to visit the site, uh, the central, uh, then uh, you guys will see more of it. Alright, that's it for our new friend, Aiden.